pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Madam Secretary, will you please call roll? Christopher Sines. Present. Edwin Borkas. Edith Flores. Present. Christopher Garrido. Present. And I'd like to acknowledge one vacant position on the dais. At this moment, I'll entertain a motion to excuse Edwin Borkas. A motion to approve. Excuse Edwin Borkas. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3-0. At this moment, I'll open up public communications. If there's anybody in um, the chamber that would like to um, address the Planning Commission on anything other than what's on the agenda, please come up. Uh, you have three minutes. Please state your name and address. Seeing no interest, I now close public communications. Consent calendar. Uh, Action minutes from December 11th, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, I move to approve. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 0. Tim, may I get a clarification on the motion? Yes. The, uh, the motion uh, came from Commissioner Garrido, seconded by. Um, uh, uh, Commissioner um, Edith Flores, Flores and um, approved 3 0. Motion to approve. At this time, we're going to move to public hearings. Uh, uh, item uh, number two to consider a request to approve a tentative parse. So map to allow the subdivision of one lot into two lots within the R1 single family residential zone for the creation of two single family residential lots pursuant to table 152.10 in the city's municipal code location 14319 Merced Avenue applicant Samir Kori case number PM 1439 Mr. Ron Garcia. Uh, good evening, Honorable Chair and members of the committee. Um, so today before you, so today before you is tentative parcel map PM 1439, a request for consideration to subdivide one lot into two lots within the R1 single family residential zone to facilitate the creation of two single family lots at 14319 Merced Avenue. Uh, the project is exempt from the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act, Section 15315, for minor land divisions of the CEQA guidelines. Okay. Uh, so the lot is, a rectang is rectangular in shape and is generally flat. Uh, the parcel is currently developed with one single-family home that will be maintained during this subdivision, and the property is uh, currently one parcel with a lot area of approximately 13,649 square feet. Uh, the subject property's zoning designation is currently single family residential, which is R1, and the site is also surrounded by single family residential zones. Uh, so the site plan submitted by the applicant indicated that indicates the layout, which consists of two single family residential lots. Uh, parcel number one will be 7,384 square feet and, and will maintain one single family story um, residential dwelling and a 355 square foot garage and will continue to have um, driveway access from Merced Avenue. Uh, and parcel two will be 6,285 square feet and will remain vacant and utilized for, future for a future residential structure and will provide a new frontage along Stitchman Avenue. Uh, before concluding, I did want to address a minor oversight um, in the resolution that was provided to you in your agenda packets. Uh, on page 4, section 3, 
item C. Um, it reads um, that the applicant will have one year to comply with all the conditions, um, but that will be changed to the applicant will have two years from the date of approval to comply with all conditions uh, per the Subdivision Map Act um, standards. Uh, so to conclude, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission approve resolution PC 20-01 to approve PM 1439. Thank you. Also, like to add that the applicant is present uh, for any further questions. Is Section three, item C. At this time, do the commissioners have any questions of staff? No. So at this time, I'm going to open up the public hearing if there's anybody here that would has. Um, would like to come speak on uh, this matter. You have three minutes. Please come up, state your name and address. At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, any additional questions? <coughs> so just for clarification, we're not approving a, a project on the second half of the lot right now. It's just a subdivision. Of the that is correct. Parcel. It's just the parcel map. Um, with the amended change to the uh, uh, condition uh, item C to one year to two years. No, no, no amendment to the resolution. Uh, Mr. Chair, we do not need an amendment, but I do want to make it clear for the record that we are uh, the uh, planning commission is not considering the resolution that was in the packet. The Planning Commission is considering the resolution that's been provided on the dice, which has the changes identified by our clerk, which includes two years, not one year. So that's the resolution that's before the commission, and that's the resolution that will be passed or denied. At this time, do I have a motion to adopt resolution PC 20-01, a resolution of the, of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park approving a tentative parcel map to subdivide one lot into two lots to facilitate the creation of two single-family residential lots within the R1 single-family residential zone pursuant to Table 152.10 of the City's Municipal Code, location 14319 Merced Avenue? I motion to approve. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 0. Congratulations. At this time, we're going to move to matter number three to consider a request for a recommendation of approval to the City Council on Development Agreement to permit the non extraction manufacturing of adult <coughs> and. Oh, there we go. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, at this time, staff is recommending that do we put, uh, that we uh, continue the item to a date uncertain uh, due to the applicant requesting some changes. And so, Mr. Chairman, we do want to open up the public uh, hearing and then continue it to a date uncertain. At this time, I will open up the public hearing. I, right, I, my, do I have a motion to continue this matter to a date uncertain? Make a motion to uh, continue to a date uncertain. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Matter number three has been moved to a date uncertain. At this time, we're going to go to matter, move on to matter four. 
to consider a request for approval of a conditional use permit for alcohol use within an existing 1,472 square foot restaurant. The project is located within the C2 General Commercial Zone, location 4056 Main Avenue, case number CP890. Mr. Ron Garcia. Yes, planning intern Rogelio Baez will be doing the presentation. Good evening. This application represents a, re a request for the Planning Commission's consideration of a conditional use permit for alcohol use in an existing restaurant located at 4506 Main Avenue. The general plan land use designation of the subject property is in commercial and the subject site zone general commercial C2. The site in question is located at the southwest corner of Main Avenue and Estella Street, detailed in the aerial view provided. Oh, sorry. This one. <clears throat> the restaurant is located within a plaza and is surrounded by commercial areas north and east of the restaurant. The applicant is proposing an alcohol use type 41 permit for an existing 1,472 square foot restaurant, Birreria La Michoacana. Due to the proposal of on sale alcohol, <coughs> there will be a slight over concentration of an on sale alcohol permits in the tract. Additionally, the restaurant will provide a wide variety of Mexican food cuisines along with offering the option of alcohol consumption between the allowable hours. The location of the subject site being adjacent to commercial designated zones, conditions of approval have been included to address any adverse impacts this use may have on adjacent properties. Staff believes that there will not be any adverse impact to the adjacent properties as a result of the proposed alcohol use for the existing restaurant, even with the over-concentration of on-sale alcohol permits. Staff recommends that Planning Commission adopt Resolution PC 20-03 to approve CP 890. Thank you. At this time, is there any, uh, does the Commission have any questions of staff? Is the uh, is this restaurant going to be selling beer, wine, and liquor? Or is it just strictly just like beer and wine permit? Uh, it's strictly a a beer and wine permit. Okay. Yeah. Beer and wine. Any additional questions of staff? So at this time, I'm going to open up the public hearing. If there's anybody that has anything to say in favor of the matter, please come up. You have three minutes. Please state your name. If there's anybody that has anything to say against uh, against the matter, you have. Uh, please come up. You have three minutes. Please state your name. Seeing no interest, I close the public hearing. Commissioners, any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, so it's it's a conditional use permit to allow for alcohol, or should we should we change that to beer and wine to be more specific, or does it matter? The alcohol license that's issued by the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control is the department that will issue that has overview as far as what they what is being sold. Um, we could be specific. Um, uh, but uh, uh, ABC will be the ones right. to make sure that that's all they have the permit to, to sell okay. for on-site alcohol sales. Right. I, I know the alcohol is a little bit harder to get, but um, this was wondering for us, just for us. But okay, alcohol is good. Thank and, you. Um, I'll be, um, so this, this um, conditional use permit allows them to apply for, apply to the, um, 
ABC, right? Like they're, they're a, they don't currently hold a permit, um, but they're, this would allow them to move along in the process. That is correct. So since there's an over concentration in the area, is there an available permit? Like, isn't, isn't there like a certain amount of permits allowed per track? Yeah, so what happens is the Department of Alcohol and Beverage Control, when we do the undue concentration, uh, uh, one of the requirements is to sh show within the census tract how many how many alcohol licenses for on sale and off sale are allowed per uh, ABC. And so that information is provided to the city. Right. So that way they have that information for making the determination. Um, <coughs> there isn't a special permit from ABC. It's more for informational to more for informational purposes to the um, the city to understand how many alcohol licenses for on sale and off sale. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just to add, one of the requirements is so for ABC, in order for them to come to the city to apply for the CUP, one of the requirements from uh, for from ABC is that they have to first apply with ABC, and then the second step is to then see it through with the permitting entitlement process for the uh, within the appropriate. Um, uh, city. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, in uh, your staff report, it says it's the staff's opinion that although there will be an increase of on sale, on sale ABC licenses within the census tract, the increase maintains the total number of on sale ABC licenses within the allowable number for census tract 4051.01. Is that accurate? That it's still within the allowable limits for that census tract? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Thank you. At this time, do I have a motion to approve? Excuse me. Motion to approve resolution PC 20, is it 403? Uh, PC 20-03. Yes, PC 20-03. I second. No, yeah, it's PC 20-03. Uh, Commissioner Garrido, does your motion also include adopting the uh, findings of fact contained uh, in the resolution? Yes, it does. Thank you. So all those in favor of adopting the findings of facts and resolution PC 20-03, a resolution of the Planning Commission, the City of Baltimore Park, approving conditional use permits to allow the operation of alcohol sales within the C2 General Commercial Zone pursuant to Table 153-050-020 of the City's Municipal Code. Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3-0. So at this time, we're going to move on to reports of officers. Yes. Uh, first off, I just want to uh, have s some good news. Uh, planning staff a couple months ago applied for uh, an SB2 grant um, with the Department of Housing and Community Development and were awarded a $310,000 grant to revise the downtown specific plan. Um, there you go, staff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, the impetus for the SB2 grant was to, uh, to uh, for the creation of, of housing opportunities. So within that, we're going to be looking at the downtown specific plan and uh, not only increasing density, but also looking at some other areas that we can improve uh, to entice developers to want to come to the downtown um, to create housing opportunities. Um, and then second... Um, is we will have scheduled planning commission for the 12th and also the 26th of February. But that concludes uh, our reports. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any questions? So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are now adjourned. Viva Baldwin Park. Viva Baldwin Park.